Good morning, Bitcoiners. I hope you're doing well. Who could complain? I'm loving my life. Things are going great. Ben, happy Bitcoin team. Indeed. Christine, good morning. Thanks for joining us, Christine. We love it. We love it. John, good morning. God bless you all. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Hassan Nagib, good morning, Hassan. Thanks for coming, my man. Looking good in those squats, man. Looking good in the profile squat pick. Uh, did you consolidate your UTXOs yet? That's a good message out there. Um, I'm always behind on that, but that's okay. Robert, Robert, good morning. Merry Christmas, Aqualodge. Good morning, coffee and sunrise. Assalamu alaikum. Oh my God, the fees are killing me with these stupid ordinals taking up all the block space, making a pleb like me have fees eat up my stack when I purchase small amounts. Crazy times. Is that the case even on like Cash App and stuff? I don't know. I haven't, uh, I've been low slave money lately, so I haven't been buying much Bitcoin. Tommy, good morning, team. Don't use Unisat wallet for ordinals anymore. If you uh, were degenning, is that so? Is that so? Good morning, Nolan and fam. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Tommy. Hope you're doing well. Good morning, Tom. Blessed to be here with you all. Thanks, Greg. P Man Van. Hey, everyone. Happy Satmas. Indeed, we're getting to the Christmas time, right? It's coming. It's coming. But first, we have a few more instances of Sunrise Tech having to engage before it's actually Christmas. So we're not quite there, but we're getting there, right? We've got two more Sunrise Tech engagements to go, uh, two more spins of the earth. But for now, the sun is up on the east coast of North America. And despite the fees that Muslim Bitcoiner has reminded us about, Bitcoin is running just fine. All right. Little expensive, but that's okay, right? Nothing left for us to do but have a coffee and talk about what's new. Another one of these old cups of coffee, all right? Old cups of coffee, old news. That's what we got today, but we got a lot of Moscow time again. <laughs> a lot of Moscow time, so let's get into it. Um, so this is from the New York Times. You know, everyone's uh, worried about this uh, Harvard President Gay, you know, President Gay. Um, well, now they've invented a new word for what she did because she's in trouble for plagiarism, right? That's the thing that everyone's complaining about that she plagiarized. So New York Times with a new euphemism, Harvard finds more instances of duplicative language, <laughs> duplicative language, <laughs> duplicative spending, duplicative language in president's work. So there's a, there's a pretty good one. But it gets better, right? If you read the actual article, they also mention uh, instances of inadequate citation. <laughs> instances of inadequate citation. And uh, don't forget the uh, duplicative language, right? <laughs> oh, hold on. Uh, let me just make sure Rumble is working. Let me just make sure it engaged because I loaded this video up a little bit late. Sometimes when I load it up late, we don't get what we want. It says I'm live. It says lots of people are watching. There we go. Engage. There we go. Merry Christmas, Bitcoiners from Lance. Let me make sure it's going. Uh, Meg, Meiji, Meggy, Meggy or Meggy 07. Get ready. Good morning. Ready for the best daily show out there. Thank you, Meiji 007. We appreciate it. We've got plenty of watchers over on Rumble. Let me get back to the comments on that one later. So there you go. That's the first one with uh, President Gay of Harvard. Uh, so next we've got, uh, you know how people are talking about Accelerate, like Accelerate or Die, right? You see everyone with the EACC meme in their name these days, right? So that's the Accelerate or Die uh, embracing of that idea with the techno-optimists. We read you the techno-optimist manifesto the day it came out and Mark Andreessen wrote it. Um, but it looks like the uh, fake news is jumping on that meme of Accelerate, but they've got their own version, okay? And it's coming from, guess where, Germany, <laughs> Germany, right? The smartest people in the world, the Germans, uh, they're just amazing. Uh, so they're not going with the Accelerate or Die, they're going with Vaccelerate, okay? So that's what's going on in Germany, it's Vaccelerate. And what's Vaccelerate? A German EU program aims to facilitate fast vaccines, right? They want, they're not, they weren't fast enough, guys. We need them faster. So they're going to vaccelerate. 
<laughs> awesome. Vaccelerate is so good. Uh, Rolling Stone's got a few submissions this morning, right? Now, it's a good thing we know about Rolling Stone. Imagine taking Rolling Stone seriously and like getting mad about the stuff they say. So here's here's what they say about it. It's a new section they call Fascism Forward. Okay, so it's Fascism Forward. Trump vows to amp up the Hitler talk. <laughs> Trump plans to keep using the poisoning the bloodline attack on immigrants. Sources tell Rolling Stone. <laughs> Sources tell. <laughs> if anything, he thinks he was being too nice. <laughs> it's too good. I can't. I can't. Okay, we got more. We got more. So this is the... Uh, these are the uh, expert people again. These are peer-reviewed experts, right? So the experts are weighing in, right? They, You know when you do one of these expert studies, you got to spend some slave money, some U.S. trash tokens. You got to get everyone together. Then you get the big brains together. Then you do the scientific method. And then you have a hypothesis and you try and prove it or disprove it or replicate it. So all this architecture, right, for the scientific method. Finally, they have applied it to something worthwhile. Like what a mystery this question is, right? This is a, a user-generated Moscow Time headline as well. So thank you for that. This comes from the Publica. All right. So remember, the whole architecture was wielded out for this thing. Okay. Everything. The 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 Claudine Gay University stuff, the I don't know if they did any insufficient citations or duplicative language. I don't know. They didn't get caught in, in the peer-reviewed part. But let me tell you something. This is, if they ever build a shrine, if they ever want to worship science and the scientific method, if they want to put up an altar, an icon, and pray to it, right? If that's what the science experts want to do, this is the study for them because it was peer-reviewed, right? Wait until you hear the insights, guys. Wait until you hear it. A new peer-reviewed study has found that male non-binary athletes run faster than female non-binary athletes. What? <laughs> Science, what? Many on social media are pointing out the results seem obvious. No, that can't be true. So they did some study and they got the peer reviews to find out that male athletes run faster than female non-binary athletes. Male non-binary athletes run faster than female non-binary athletes. Science guys, science experts and peer reviews. They all got it for us, right? So there, now you know, now you know. Uh, this one's pretty funny. We haven't talked about this one yet, but this is great. <clears throat> so uh, Sweden, you know, Sweden, uh, they got, that's where Greta comes from. And they're, they're still a little bit worried about what Greta thinks about stuff, right? So they're still making policies on what Greta thinks. It's not everyone in Sweden, but it turns out the uh, postal service, the Swedish mail, really into Greta's stuff, right? And uh, and all that kind of stuff. So it turns out that they're not happy with Tesla. Tesla, right? They don't like Tesla now. So Tesla is effectively blocked from delivering new cars in Sweden after the electric vehicle maker lost an appeal against the country's postal service as a labor dispute rumbles on. <laughs> so you can't buy a Tesla there. Now, I don't know if Greta's happy about this. I hope she gets something for Christmas that makes her feel better because she's, you know, I don't know how she's going to land on this one. Honestly, I don't know how she's going to land. So it turns out in France, they're going to be getting rid of the uh, wind farms, right? So they're going to be getting rid of wind farms in France. Uh, why? Well, they found out that he, uh, this is what the headline says, court orders wind farm to be torn down after golden eagle death. The wind farm that was subject to lengthy legal battle would reportedly be the first in France to be demolished by court order. And it turns out, guys, that what they found out in France is that it's actually killing thousands of birds. Like a lot of big, beautiful birds are dying because of the wind farms, right? But I don't know. We're going to have to see how Greta, Greta feels about all this. This is big news, right? It's a big change. Um, this one, too. I, I don't know what to say, how Greta is going to react to this, if it's going to be a Merry Christmas for her or not. I, I just can't tell, right? Because it turns out now that with Bloomberg Energy, right, where I go for a lot of my fake news, um, this is more science, guys. This is more experts, and this is more science at work, okay? So malaria and other mosquito-borne diseases, all right? Ready? Here's the headline, guys. 
may become bigger threats as temperature rise. The temperature is going to rise, then the bugs are going to come up from the south. They might make it to Sweden. Greta's not going to be happy about that. I'm pretty sure she's not going to be happy about that. Oh, so this is great. This is this is a, an amazing thing. I was going to do like a best of Moscow time for the year, right? I was going to find like the fakest news I could find in the year. But it turns out PolitiFact kind of did it for me. You know, the fact checkers, you know, we've learned about what the fact checkers do in the architecture of deceit, right? In the architecture of the hallucinatory fiat scam, right? How they actually functions. So we've understood a little bit about PolitiFact and the fact checkers and what a big part of the scam they are. Remember, Satoshi told us all about this, right? Trusted third parties. So now we've got all these trusted third parties fact checking the news as if the news was already not corrupt enough. You've got a new layer, like a new business model, right? Mike Benz has been great letting us know what that business model looks like. So what PolitiFact has done is they've taken the, according to them, okay, they've fact checked the 10 biggest fake news stories according to PolitiFact. Let's have a look. Let's have what I have to say, right? So uh, first is, uh, Matt Walsh, right? This was from the summertime. Uh, Tuck-friendly bathing suits at Target are available in kids' sizes. Okay, so that, that was the claim that Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire said. So we want to get Daily Wire um, uh, CEO, owner, president, or whatever, Jeremy Boring at Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville. We would love to see that. Um, so this is Matt Walsh, who works for him, talking about this stuff, right? So he's saying there was tuck-friendly bathing suits. What's a tuck-friendly bathing suit? It's you know, if you didn't get it clipped yet, if you didn't do the full Monty, you didn't you didn't go through the whole thing and you still have a male unit, right? So if you're in the middle ground, right, you didn't go this way and then you did that and then you got to have a bailing suit because you don't want it out and all that stuff, right? Just ask Big Mike, she'll tell you. Um, so here's what we got, right? Uh, the tuck friendly bathing suits at Targets are available for kids. So they fact checked it. Politica, PolitiFact fact checked it, right? As part of its LGBTQ plus pride collection, Target sold adult swimwear with tuck friendly construction that had extra crotch cover to tuck private parts. That that I'm, I'm obviously fine with, right? Anyone, you know, sometimes you got to do it. But misleading posts about the swimwear quick, quickly spread online with conservative commenters such as Matt Walsh and social media accounts such as Libs of TikTok and Gays Against Groomers claiming that the retailer was selling the bathing suits for children. The swimwear was available only in adult sizes, a Target post, post. So Target told them, so this must be true, right? Who would fact checked Target spokesperson told us <laughs> done, <laughs> done, solved. Uh, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> adult swimsuits. So, you know, probably Matt, Matt, Matt Walsh spreads fake news. We got to admit that, right? There is some fake news that he spreads, but who knows? I don't know the answer. They believe the target spokesperson. <laughs> there you go. Remember, um, remember what, uh, Mike Cernovich did a couple of years ago when, uh, he was on 60 minutes. One of the, one of the most clever things you've ever seen. He did this interview after the 2016 ele election when they wanted to pile on to the Comet pizzeria and pizza gate and make everyone uh, blame fake news for Donald Trump getting elected. And they brought Cernovich onto the show, right? So Cernovich was interviewed by 60 minutes that time, but he was smart enough to record the interview. This was before people were that suspicious of the fake news, right? At the time, I wouldn't even do that. I would have said, Oh, 60 minutes. They're gonna they're gonna interview me and they're gonna want to know what I thought. Wow, <laughs> that's what I would have said in 2017 or whatever, right? Cernovich was much smarter at the time, and what he did was he recorded them, and he found out that and so they they clipped it right when they said, "How did you know?" Because the whole point was um, uh, that Cernovich was commenting and went sort of viral with his video of Hillary Clinton on September 11th collapsing. You know that video that many people have gone on about for years since right so she's she goes to the 9-11 memorial and then she sort of passes out in front of her limo outside of the when she's getting pushed back in and a bunch of people have to throw her into the truck and then they whisk her away um so cernovich went on you know what about her health and we got to figure out her health and people should be asking questions and they tried to run that as fake news at the time so when he went on 60 minutes they sort of interrogated him about this but they edited it so that he looked like an idiot but he kept the video that he recorded of the interview itself right and so when you see them asking him you know how did you know hillary clinton was sick and he says well she collapsed like what do you mean and then he says well how did you know she wasn't 
And then with all the confidence in the world, the reporter says the campaign told us like as if it was a comeback, but he didn't really understand. It was only when he got sort of, a, you know, off solid ground that he realized like in one of these Looney Tunes videos, you know, the Looney Tunes, when the coyote chases the roadrunner. And it's only when he realizes that there's no ground under him anymore that he falls. It looked like that. The journalist is like, oh, the, the campaign told us. And then for a second, you see that he realizes he's not on solid ground anymore. And you could see Cernovich say, oh, and you believe the campaign? <laughs> Aren't you a journalist? Do you just believe what people tell you? It, woo! <laughs> he fell down, finished. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> next one, right? So that's the first politic PolitiFact fact check. Here's another one. Donald Trump. They are trying to make it illegal to question the results of a bad election. PolitiFact's ruling? False. In August, former President Donald Trump framed the special counsel's federal indictment against him as an attempt to criminalize raising questions over election results. But the August 1st indictment over Trump's efforts to subvert the 2020 presidential election results said he had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and make false claims. It said Trump also was entitled to challenge the results lawfully through recounts, audits, or lawsuits. Trump was indicted for his actions, not for questioning the election. Right. So there you go. It wasn't it wasn't for that. Right. Here's a good one too. Scott Adams, who we love. We love Scott Adams. Right. Um, so they fact checked him as one of the top 10 fake news stories of the year. He says people not vaccinated against COVID-19 came out the best. Uh, false, they say in January. Uh, so this is the best too. They they actually um, oh, here's what he says. In January, cartoonist Scott Adams, who created the Dilbert comic strip, claimed in a YouTube live stream that people unvaccinated at co uh, against COVID-19 are better off than those who are. But data, data from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and medical experts has consistently shown everyone, they've consistently shown that men run faster than women <laughs> and, and um that um <clears throat> unvaccinated people are at a greater risk than vaccinated people of getting infected with covid-19 and dying from it there you go they have a strong safety record politifact strong safety record uh they got another one here on the tennessee protesters that one's a little boring uh this one's good right <laughs> gavin newsom okay so so everything until now right just things conservative people said stupid false right and this is a new one all right now <laughs> gavin newsom per capita more floridians move to california than californians moving to florida <laughs> so he's saying gavin is saying this is what he did in the debate with new with desantis that that yeah yeah it's true M more people are moving to uh, California, then they're moving to Florida, right? That's what he's saying. Uh, so according to PolitiFact, it's mostly true. We found that California Governor Gavin Newsom, a Democrat, was on track when he told Fox News host Sean Hannity in June that per capita, more Floridians have moved to California than the other way around. U.S. Census Bureau from data from 2021, the latest available, backs that up. This has been a slight trend for decades, experts say, but the difference between the rate of Floridians moving to California and vice versa is tiny and based on estimates. And there's debate on whether the difference is statistically significant. <laughs> so good. All right, this one's good too. Uh, Donald Trump, the same people that raided Israel are pouring into our once beautiful USA through our totally open Southern border at record numbers. PolitiFact's ruling, pants on fire. So he's a liar for saying it. Trump made this claim on his Truth Social platform days after Hamas attacked, attacked Israel on October 7th. But terrorism experts, terrorism experts, everyone, told PolitiFact that there's no proof. <laughs> so they didn't look for it, right? They didn't, you know, 10,000 people a day coming across the border, right? You know, 10,000 people coming a day coming across the southern border. No one's looking, you know, of those 10,000. No, none of them. It's all cool, man. They're too cool. But terrorism experts told the fact that there's no proof that Hamas mili militants are pouring across the U.S. southern border. And the Department of Homeland Security said there's no intelligence to back it up. Shit. Shit. Stumped. They got it. <clears throat> Uh, this one's also great. Uh, Gavin Newsom. Okay. <laughs> more Gavin Newsom. He made the following claim. We are more energy independent today under President Joe Biden. 
<laughs> half true. Political facts says half true, half true. Uh, in conversation with Hannity after the second Republican presidential debate in September, Newsom said the U.S. was more energy independent under President Joe Biden. His statement came in response to a claim by then candidate and former Vice President Mike Pence during the debate that the country achieved energy independence during his tenure when Trump was president. In several measurable ways, the U.S. has moved towards energy independence in recent years. Experts said, though, that this hasn't meant genuine energy dependence, blah, 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 blah. Um, and they just go on to say that uh, the U.S. still depends on international crude oil for key elements of its energy needs, making it sensitive to overseas developments, energy, trade, and foreign policy. Energy independence gains under Trump's leadership have strengthened under Biden. <laughs> They got one about the debt, about something that uh, Joe Biden said, uh, you know, Joe Biden's true. It's fine. He's OK. Right. Uh, this one's good, too. Uh, number one, pants on fire. All right. The number one pants on fire case. Capitol police officers helped QAnon shaman Jacob Chansley and acted as his tour guides. All right. So Tucker Carlson said that uh, our ruling pants on fire. In the top spot is former Fox News host Tucker Carlson, who claimed in March that Capitol Police officers acted as tour guides for QAnon chairman Jacob Chansley. But available evidence rebutes this, rebuts this. Officers repeatedly asked Chansley to leave the building. This is corroborated by the plea agreement Chansley signed in a Capitol Police officer's account of the events. They called it outrageous and false. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? So there's a few other ones. I got one more, one more for you, one more for you. In the spirit of Christmas, bonus, right? A bonus. This is from a Rolling Stone again. <clears throat> and it's Robert De Niro. What is on Robert De Niro's hard drive? What do they have on Robert De Niro, right? De Niro. <laughs> um, you know, he's one of these guys that I'm sure when the secrets start pouring out, and I believe 2024, we're going to start to see the secrets, right? I guess January 1st, the first day we get some of the Epstein list. Now, I'm not so crazy about the Epstein list because look, it wasn't everyone who flew on his airplane that was a scumbag. What about some of the women that were on his plane, right? So you got to be careful with the list, right? It's I'm interested, 100% interested. But there must have been some people on the flight that were innocent. There must be. There must be. Right? It can't just be everyone there was a criminal. So, um, but it's the beginning of a trend. So I, I'm definitely anticipating the list, but I'm not holding out hopes that it changes people's thoughts and minds and all that stuff. Right? So I'm not that far. But cumulatively in 2024, the amount of new things we find out, right? The amount of secrets that become unveiled. I think 2024 is going to be a great unveiling of secrets. And I have a feeling we're going to find out that Robert De Niro likes some pretty fucked up stuff. All right. That, that's just a feeling that I have. OK, because this is the kind of shit he's saying. All right. This is what he says. Imagine now. Now, remember, we know that there is a blackmail system running throughout America. It's even one of the things that I have. Jesse Waters talking about it uh, yesterday on um, Fox News saying that. Uh, um, <clears throat> sexual blackmail in Congress is one of the biggest things. Members of Congress are being blackmailed. Uh, Tim Burchett broke the internet on the Benny show for speaking about it. Jesse Waters has been covering. Um, <clears throat> so it happened yesterday. So more and more people talking about the blackmail industrial complex, right? Blackmail becoming more and more evident in the system, right? We're going to talk about Jack Smith in a few seconds. Uh, Preston, uh, Burn, no, Patrick Burn. Um, is that Preston Patrick? Anyway, there's a Burn guy, Overstock guy. Um, uh, he's been talking about the blackmail industrial complex for a long time, just how systematic it is, just how widespread it is. Uh, and you've got to remember this blackmail system if you're going to make sense of what people say. So I'm mentioning all this because Robert De Niro, who I don't think is an idiot, like I don't think Robert De Niro has zero IQ, right? That, that's just me. I don't think he has zero IQ. I think he's very smart. I bet he's very smart, right? So how do you square smart people with the, maybe he might just have TDS. It might just be a raging case of TDS, right? But I see an actor and I see blackmail. All right. That's what I see, especially when he says stuff like this. This is something that came out of his mouth yesterday or maybe the other day, but it was in the Rolling Stone magazine just now. What do we know about Rolling Stone? A lot. This is his actual quote, everyone. I think that if Biden was on a gurney and couldn't move anything but his eyes to blink yes or no, he's our person. 
there's no way that he's not the guy to take Trump down. <laughs> so I wonder what's going on on his phone. I wonder what's in his mailbox. I wonder what's going on, right? I think we're going to find out. I think 2024 is the year we're going to find out. Um, so there you go. All right. So, uh, you know, it's mostly fake news today because the normal fake news people that have better spin are all on vacation. So they're on their, it's like the summertime when, when fake news is abundant in its own way, but it's lower quality fake news. Cause it's just interns. It's just like the, it's just the midnight crew running these ships right now, right? Everyone's sort of dispersing and going to their places and break times and da, 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 da. So we're a little less on the fake news, right? And, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, we do have a few stories about how the USD war machine is falling apart and it goes back to what Bukele was saying yesterday, right? So Bukele, um, quoted by, uh, Tucker Carlson, um, <clears throat> and he said this before, right? So Bukele signaled this a year ago when all of this trouble started with Trump, he said, the world USA can no longer lecture the world on democracy. And now yesterday it was even more explicitly true, right? So uh, Bukele um, tweeted that out again, saying America has lost its moral authority to wag its finger at people and tell them how to behave and, and to be their sort of benchmark for democracy. Um, and that's in the case of the Jack Smith stuff and, and whatnot. Now we find out it's much worse than we think right? The, the Jack Smith thing is much, much worse. Uh, all kinds of people talking about this yesterday. Um, and that is that the uh, appointment of him, right? The appointment of the special prosecutor, Jack Smith, apparently was done in an empty shell, as in it's not, it was never formally done. He's not really a special prosecutor, a, a, according to a bunch of legal experts yesterday, right? So I don't know anything about these details. None, no, no, no. I'm trained as a lawyer, never practiced as a lawyer, uh, did a little bit of law, like, you know, articling in, in Japan. I worked on banking law in the parliament in Canada, but I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know a lot of this procedural stuff. But what I do understand are the basic principles of administrative law. And the basic principles of administrative law are the following. If you want to delegate power to someone, you can't invent powers to delegate them. You can only delegate what you yourself have right? Like a, if you go to the DMV to get a driver's license, right? They can't give you a pilot's license. <laughs> they don't have that power, right? They just don't have that power. They were delegated powers and the powers they were delegated are limited and they're limited to what they are. And this happens in all kinds of quasi-judicial cases when you're appointing a kind of quasi-judicial judge or you're uh, appointing some um, um, appointee that would exercise state power and but the, the powers that come from the state uh, can't be grown, can't be amplified when they're delegated to someone down the food chain, right? They, they can only be less. They can't be more. And it looks like that's what happened with Jack Smith. So a lot of people talking about that today. Now, I don't know. This could be a total nothing burger, a total and complete nothing burger, right? But a lot of smart people are talking about it today. And a lot of people are saying that the uh, situation there is. Um, um, such that he was never appointed correctly and that he uh, has been more or less functioning outside of any legal parameter until now. So a lot of people are bringing this up today. A lot of people talking about it. Let me get the quotes that I got for you here because um, we got some good stuff. So first of all, Julie Kelly was uh, on Steve Bannon yesterday, the war room on Rumble talking about this. She says, Court filings come in fast and furious this week, but this is a stunner. Former Attorney General Edward Meese asked SCOTUS to deny Jack Smith's petition to expedite appeal of immunity ruling, argues uh, Merrick Garland, broke the law by appointing a special counsel without statutory authority. So here's what it looks like, right? Um, this is what the, uh, the fellow is saying, right? Garland cited a statutory authority for his appointment, blah, 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 blah. He's just listing the provisions here. But none of those statutes, nor any other statutory or constitutional provisions, remotely authorize the appointment by the attorney general of a private citizen to receive extraordinary criminal law enforcement power under the title of special counsel. 
The illegality addressed in this brief started at, on November 18th, 2022, when Attorney General Merrick Garland exceeded his statutory and constitutional authority by purporting to appoint Smith to serve as special counsel for the Department of Justice. So apparently this is just never done. <laughs> the power doesn't exist to give it to him. And if it was, they never went through the hoops to do it, according to some people. Now, I don't know what the actual ins and outs of this are, but Patrick Byrne and others have been mentioning, remember, Jack Smith, right? J just like Robert De Niro, right? I don't think he's stupid. I don't think Jack Smith is mentally handicapped. He might have a ton of TDS brain damage. He might have uh, uh, U.S. trash token incentive brain damage. He might have brain damage from being a blackmailer, which is what Patrick Byrne says he is, right? So there are many people that say his job, Jack Smith. Now, I have no proof about this stuff, by the way. This is shit I saw on the internet, okay? So just remember, you're hearing shit I saw and read about on the internet by people I think are credible and who I know. So I'm saying I believe it, right? But it confirms my narrative bias. I want to believe that Jack Smith is a blackmailing, unconstitutional prosecutor because that's sort of how I see the world, right, at this point. But I could be wrong. But from what I see and what from Patrick Byrne says and what other people say, that was Jack Smith's job. He was a blackmailer for The Hague, well, for America at The Hague in Europe. He blackmailed Europeans at huge scales, right? Apparently, he has all kinds of aliases. So Patrick Byrne is uh, gathering his aliases together and saying this and that and da da da, da. And he's been saying this for a, a while now. So he's been consistent in this for a while. Um, now, remember, if you guys don't know who Patrick Byrne is, he was sort of the Michael Saylor of two cycles ago for Bitcoin. He was one of the first uh, CEOs of a, you know, a real company, Overstock, that kept their balance sheet in Bitcoin, that were interested in Bitcoin stuff. So I had dealt with him years ago for many things. I actually set up a talk between him and Adam back to end my 2019 consensus show. That was the last act of the 2019 consensus show on Broadway in New York. And um, <clears throat> we we ended it with a 10 year retrospective on Bitcoin with Adam Back and him. It was, it was a great session, right? Because these were two legit people that have been around for a while and could talk about it. Because I think Patrick Byrne became like all in on Bitcoin in 2014 or something. Um, I can even remember when, when the, the 2014 cycle ended, um, the San Jose Bitcoin conference was planned for just after, and the room was basically empty. You had, you know, you see these pictures of Andreas Antonopoulos talking to an empty room. That was then Patrick Byrne was there too. The place was empty. Like the energy was gone. Bitcoin was 200 bucks. Uh, it had come down from 1300 or something. We were done. Everyone was laughing at us. Ha, 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 ha. He was still there. So he's a legit guy around Bitcoin. Apparently, what happened in the years later is that when Trump was elected, he was blackmailed himself. So he has direct experience with the blackmail industrial complex. That's why I've taken him so credibly right now. His reputation got trashed from that. And it's not that easy to have confidence in him. There are some credibility issues with him, right? I don't know what I, I don't know if he's being totally honest, if this is an ego thing, if, if he's wrong. He could be honest, but he's wrong. So there's a few ways that this could go differently than we think, right? And it's important to remind ourselves of these things. Um, but from where I sit, I think he's right on the target. I think he's um, understanding just how pervasive this blackmail thing is. And if he's correct, it makes more sense of what we see here. And, and if you want to wonder why Jack Smith is so, um, you know, like I said, his actions legally look as dumb as what Robert De Niro says out loud about Trump. Now, they could both have TDS. They could both believe it, right? So what I'm saying is they don't believe it. They're blackmailed and everything that's coming out of their mouth is from the impetus of being blackmailed, right? The incentive here is don't let people know where I put and who I have sex with and where I put my penis and all of those things. Pardon the vulgarity, but that's what I see, right? So there you go. Um, pardon me, my uh, coffee supply is low. Um, I did not read the Bitcoin CBDC article on Bitcoin Magazine, yet, but I will, but I will. So um, now what also happened is 
Um, of course, a few days ago, Jack Smith tried to push the Supreme Court to make a decision about Trump immunity uh, for having been president. The same thing we've been talking about for a while that's somewhat related to the Colorado case. Um, but in general, it's about what crimes a president can be guilty for or not. And so the Supreme Court has taken this up, right? And um, now, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jack Smith is filing, um, according to Julie Kelly here. So Jack Smith files response to Trump's reply to DOJ to Department of Justice petition for SCOTUS to expedite consideration of presidential immunity matter. Smith getting closer to admitting Biden regime wants this trial over and done before Election Day. So this shows something that people have been criticizing Biden for, for this coordination, keep Trump off the ballot by any legal means necessary, which means any means necessary. So um, what we see here is by, uh, sh you know, putting his pedal on the gas, putting his foot on the gas and trying to go faster so that the indictments happen before Trump um, can actually go to election all fits into this world where, um, you know, there's polling and other things that suggest that if Trump is actually convicted of one of these crimes, Republicans will abandon him, right? The idea being that as long as it's just rumors and indictments and nothing's been actually criminally tried, that, that it's not going to be enough. They have to get him actually convicted in order to get what they think is going to be his drawdown and support and, and all of these things, right? Uh, until now, the whole thing has gone backwards from what they thought, right? Every time they indict him, every time they try and color him as a criminal, his popularity goes up. The Colorado thing has sent him through the roof, right? You get um, uh, RFK commenting on it, of course. RFK saying um, that um, um, the cover the country would become ungovernable if the Colorado uh, um, uh, uh, election uh, barring Trump um, uh, decision would have effect, right? Well, isn't that the best word, too, that RFK chose? Ungovernable, right? Better than the way you immediately think that we're going to have an armed revolution and people would go crazy and all that. And that's what I warned everyone about, about the Colorado thing from the beginning, that it was a trap. It was not serious. There is nothing actionable about it. It was always just a, a situation where um, you can incite violence by, you know, basically lying straight to people in their face and, you know, kind of antagonizing them that way. So that was my feeling when I saw it. That was my feeling when I read just how weak their um, judgment was, right? There was no trial. There was nothing like that. They just picked it up themselves. Did you even see one of the lines from this thing, right? This is uh, the dissenting. So it was 4-3, the Colorado Supreme Court, right? The dissenting and and the uh, majority position, right? The four three, the majority position. Not one judge would sign their name to it, right? Remember that they didn't. No one would sign their name to it because that's so absurd, right? So they didn't want their name attached to such garbage. Uh, so it was an anon <laughs> letter from four judges in a Supreme Court. Now the minority decision, the three that said no, the Republican judges. It was a four three Democrat Republican split. Split. The Republican judge wrote the following in the minority decision, the dissenting decision, right? This is what he says. I have been involved in the justice system for 33 years now, and what took place here doesn't resemble anything I've seen in a courtroom. <laughs> that's pretty good. Huh? It's pretty good. So that's what happened. Um, now, go back to what, um, go back to what uh, um, Bukele said and what we've seen now in this U.S. case and add this one piece to it, right? And this is, this is where American... Uh, Republican, uh, I don't mean Republican Party, but the republic that is America uh, and the decentralized nature of the country becomes so important. Remember what our actual theory is, right? Our actual theory is that the federal government is a construct of World War II. It was created to win World War II, and we've been stuck with it ever since. And that's where the U.S. dollar and the war machine get their symbiotic relationship. Now, the truth about the United States is that it is a decentralized republic and that each individual U.S. state is like a sovereign country. But this um, muscle memory has atrophied since before the Civil War. Um, more and more U.S. Uh, sovereignty of the individual states has been uh, delegated upwards to the federal government. And the federal government has grown and grown and grown and grown in importance. You know, it's kind of a quirk of history. Um, the U.S. system was set up to have strong states and a weak federal government. But over time, 
this has happened uh, in the opposite way, right? It's turned the whole equation around. Canada, on the other hand, uh, was set up and designed to be the opposite of the United States from its inception. When John A. Macdonald was setting up Canada in the wake of the U.S. Civil War, because what happened, Canada exists because of the wake of the civil, U.S. Civil War. At the end of the U.S. Civil War, um, America had managed to become by far the most powerful army in the world as it fought itself. And the number of uh, inventions, military inventions that happened, the Gatling gun. I saw this fucking moron on the internet the other day, um, you know, because a lot of people are talking about uh, the lack of democratic checks and balances in Ukraine. The elections keep getting um, canceled and, you know, oh, everyone loves it in Ukraine. We don't need elections. We're in a war zone, they say, right? And so someone who wrote that, I put a uh, quote, I put a reply on Twitter saying, you know, well, the U.S. had elections during the Civil War. Like Abraham Lincoln was reelected during the Civil War with the armies of the South not far. They were in Fredericksburg, Virginia. They were just over the Potomac. They were not far. Like, I mean, really not far, right? Don't forget, D.C. was encircled by Confederate power, right? The, the, Washington, D.C. is in the South. It's not in the North, right? It's in the South. So Maryland was kind of a weird zone in the Civil War, but south of the city of D.C. was Virginia. That's where the capital of the Confederacy was. It was not far. The capital of the Confederacy is a two-hour, one-and-a-half-hour drive from D.C., right? It's not far at all. So the armies were just down there. It was all close by. It was all, you know, near. And they'd invented so many weapons. So that this guy says to me in the Ukraine thing, you know, they didn't have drones and other things. Yeah, they invented machine guns, Gatling guns, uh, all kinds of crazy shit. Like, and and trust me, they weren't afraid of using it. There was no crazy news TikTok bullshit that would come and say the human rights of the voters. There's none of that. It was killing each other wholesale. It was just killing each other wholesale. To this day, you know, this is something not a lot of people around the world know. More Americans died in the Civil War than every other combat altercation America's had in history combined. Did you know that? Did you know that more Americans died in just the Civil War than if you add up the Revolutionary War, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, all the Middle Eastern Wars, all of them, add it all up, it still does not equal the Civil War. No war that America's ever fought has led to more bloodshed than the U.S. Civil War. And this fucking loser is like, oh, do they have drones? <laughs> do they have drones? No. They had no way. They didn't even have uniforms. You couldn't tell who was who. It was like right, a civil war. It was a civil war. Anyway, the terrorism, everything. You could die at any time, right? And there were plenty of those things going on. Plenty of that stuff. So this guy's argument, you know, do they have drones? A fucking drone. <laughs> you go look at those guns they used in the Civil War and tell me those aren't the scariest things you've ever seen, right? <laughs> all day long. All day long. All day long. So the 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 truth, though, is... And, and so Canada only created itself... Because the British looked at what happened in the Civil War and said, we're not fighting them. We're not going round three, right? Because they had fought them in the Revolutionary War. And there's that War of 1812, where that was, you know, the, the sequel to the Revolutionary War. And, you know, we're, we're dealing with now 50 years after that. The British took one look at the Americans after the Civil War and said, get the fuck out of here. We're not fighting them. You're on your own, Canada. They can take you. They can do whatever they want. We're not paying for anything. We're not building anything. It's all going to be gone. And what happened was they were building so many north-south uh, commercial railroads after the Civil War to extract resources and bring them to Chicago and then to the middle and then New York and then wherever. Um, but they were all privately made and they would just go wherever resources were and they were about to inch further north, right? We still had buffalo herds in the north and Canada. We had a lot of resources to go and get. And the rest of the Eastern Canada, and you know, we had British Columbia and Quebec, Ontario, and the Maritimes in Canada. There was still nothing in the middle. It was still all territories. And the British were not going to pay for a thing. So Canada had to form to create east-west architecture, infrastructure, railroads, because no commercial, there was no commercial reason to do it, right? Now, the compromise Canada made was that the states would be more powerful than the federal government. 
um, sorry, that the federal government would be more powerful than the states because it was the only reason why they would consolidate energies to build these uh, infrastructure, right? Individually, they were all poor because all the money had come from England before. So Quebec, Ontario, uh, which they just called Upper and Lower Canada at the time, um, did not have the capacity to build this stuff. There was no money. There was nothing they could do, right? So what ended up happening was um, the state, the federal state of Canada had to be created to finance railroads and things like that. Now, America didn't really care because there was so much more to go get. And, you know, they got sort of bamboozled. Canada was the beneficiary of having smarter leaders than the Americans after the Civil War ended and 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 um, Lincoln was shot. So the next guy who came in, Andrew Johnson, is generally regarded as one of the stupidest presidents ever. He's like totally in a Joe Biden category of mental deficiency and a criminal and all kinds of stuff. And this is before U.S. Grant became the president, right? So U.S. Grant is still kind of chilling uh, after the war. He's not doing much. This guy, Andrew Johnston, becomes president, just a complete and total failure. And Canada, luckily for them, had smarter leaders and were able to sort of run the table and create a country out of it. And no one in America understood what was going on. Not that they really cared, um, but that's how Canada was created. So go back to what I was originally saying here about the state's rights and what's going on. So and and how much things are about to change in World War Three. Canada was created to be the opposite. They were created to have a strong federal government and weaker states. It be, the reality became different, which is why Canada will break apart. The states themselves are much more aware of their sovereignty. They're much more aware of their nationhood. Quebec is a nation. It's not the same as it's more, more extreme than Texas is in the United States. More, right? More. They're more Texas than Texas. And even today, like, I don't think Canada survives any of this stuff. You got Trudeau, you got, you know, immigration, for example, in Canada is shared, but mostly federal. All this Hamas stuff in Quebec and all this, Quebecers don't like this, right? They don't want to hear about Hamas and they blame Canada for it, right? They blame Canada for sending these people to Quebec. They don't want anything to do with it. You know, it's, it's a crazy story, but there's a lady in Quebec who became sort of a celebrity a couple of years ago because Quebec loves its public infrastructure stuff like hospitals and they, you know, they're, they're a collective community. So they want to do this stuff for the betterment of their people and, and all that. There was a lady, a Muslim lady who came in and was yelling at them for selling, for serving pork in a cafeteria of a hospital. This lady threw a piece of ham in her face. <laughs> Just slap. All right. That, that that's Quebec. That's Quebec right there. And they think now i'm not saying it's a good thing to do i'm just telling you where they are what they think about and they blame a lot of what's going on in quebec on canada so you take alberta you take these other states there's a lot of stuff going on in canada um, that will change now the same thing happens in the united states but in a different way because the federal government has become so powerful the federal government in canada is weak right they can't really keep the country together the federal government of the United States became super powerful, su way too powerful, way too big, way beyond even accountability. They've become so large. And so that's what we're starting to see change, right? I've made this argument many times that even in common, simple language, you can understand where things are headed. Before the Civil War, you would say the United States are. After the Civil War, you would say the United States is. After the the Second World War, you'd say the Fed is, right? Either the Federal Reserve or the federal government. You don't even bother with the United States anymore. You just talked about the corporation that ran everything. <clears throat> I think we're headed back to the United States are, and the Jack Smith thing might be one of the great examples of this, and the border. So it's a similar situation to Canada. Immigration, border, all of that stuff is changing our way of communicating, talking about it acting on it and we're going to see that in the united states so it turns out that the whole jack smith thing now this supreme court thing is being resisted by most republican u.s states so the republican u.s states now are going to go into lawfare against this jack smith and all of these people so here's what we know uh attorney general ken paxton who they tried to um kick out using the prescott bush uh cowboy um uh cowboy CIA wing, according to Mike Benz. So here's what we hear. Um, breaking, we have filed a brief at the United States Supreme Court to halt Jack Smith's move to circumvent the appeals process in his prosecution of President Trump. 
The DOJ's attempt to accelerate the prosecution is blatantly partisan and SCOTUS must reject it. Andrew Bailey joined it. So that's the uh, um, Missouri uh, attorney general as well. We have filed a brief at the United States Supreme Court to halt Jack Smith's. Uh, so they're all like writing the same email, the same Twitter post, right? So amazing. So it looks like that's where things are headed. Uh, Simon Atiba says the following as well. He says, ahead of the first Republican primary in three weeks, special counsel Jack Smith just urged the Supreme Court to quickly decide if Donald Trump has presidential immunity for alleged crimes during his presidency. Note, Smith claims a swift resolution is needed now due to the serious nature of the charges. Trump yesterday opposed skipping the appeals court in this matter, saying the judicial process must be respected. Uh, so that, you know, what we see now is, is the states acting, the states moving against it. And I think what we're going to find out is that the, um, the balance of this federal government by the states is going to change. Now, what does that end up looking like? It ends up looking a little bit like Argentina. Argentina is now liquidating its federal state. It's liquidating the federal state. It's selling off state controlled assets. It's now, um, taken away. It's, uh, monopoly on contract settlement with the peso. If any of you guys saw that yesterday, Bitcoin is now an official means of contracting in Argentina. That is to say, a debt or an obligation denominated in Bitcoin is as good as any other currency. Uh, all foreign currencies as well can be used. And this is what dollarization starts to look like. What you do, the, the case of um, Iceland many years ago, uh, I got to see it firsthand in the financial crisis. Iceland went bankrupt. They had a few assets left. It turned into like, I think the whole country had something like $300 million left. Um, and they had to decide it, what currency they were going to go to um, because the Iceland krona or whatever was dead. And so it was between the euro, which they didn't really like because it doesn't track their economy as well. So there was a chance they were going to join um, the Canadian dollar system because Canada has more or less a petrodollar. Somehow that was useful to their economy. It more mimicked their economic needs or cycles. So there was this procedural conversation in Canada where the prime minister of Iceland was going to fly to Canada with all the money of Iceland and trade it for Canadian dollars to put on the balance sheet of the central bank. It didn't happen that way, but just to show you how this stuff looks like. Um, and that's what's about to happen in Argentina, too. So um, you get states' rights that are waking up, and those are the states' rights combined with uh, what Malay is doing to the actual federal government. And you could actually see, you can see in real time, the U.S. industrial war machine breaking. You can see it. <laughs> you can see it right now, right? Because if all of these things don't work, if the states wake up, if the states start exercising sovereignty, and now that we have a blueprint for how to um, almost de-state, de-statify a, a modern liberal communist state, you actually understand what we can do with Washington, D.C. and America, and the pieces are falling into place. So it's fun. We love it. A judge can be a non, what the fuck? <laughs> they, no, they can't. They can't do that. <laughs> Tommy, they can't. It's a scam. It's a complete and total scam. There was not even a case. You understand there was not a case. Letitia James, the 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 cross-eyed um, attorney general of New York, uh, the, who can't read, she's illiterate. Um, she even accidentally, I think, said we didn't even need a trial to convict Trump. It's the same thing that's going on in Colorado. There was there was no no one even asked them for this. They did it on their own volition. It's like the California thing, right? It's the same as the California. Um, uh, Attorney General, looking for a way to keep Trump off the ballot there. Um, Stick Hex and Hammer was talking about that. He says, behold, the real attack on democracy, an attempt to make sure voters do not have the choice to choose who they desire under dubious auspices that are not even related to a legal case. So this is the um, the lieutenant governor, not the attorney general, sorry, the, uh, Elena Kunalakis, some Greek lady, I guess. Uh, so there you go. Uh, they're looking to copy what's going on in, in that place. And to go back to these attorneys general uh, suing Jack Smith, this is what we know, right? So I told you it was Texas. They are all writing the same sort of post. It's 
the state AGs for Alabama, Alaska, Florida, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Carolina, South Dakota, Utah, Texas, West Virginia, and Wyoming all filed for this. So um, if you want to know what uh, actually deconstructing the U.S. federal government looks like, it's this. It's this. And they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. Right. So there you go. Winning, winning and winning. Yeah. Uh, Civil War killed 618,000 uh, reports on both sides, on both sides. I think it was more. Uh, but again, the US, the Canadian, the American population, I think, was only like 30 million at the time. So that would be um, if it's, you know, 618, what's that into 30? That's 5%. 5% of the U.S. population, a little a little under. It's a lot. It's a lot. We've never lost 5% of our population before. Yes, both sides, yeah. Still more than the other wars. Uh, we talked amongst each other and decided he was a very bad man. Bad, bad man. <laughs> no votes for bad man. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. All right, team. Um, so that's all I got for today. Let me check the Rumble comments. Um, and... Uh, I don't think we're going to do a show tomorrow because uh, I start to have family coming. Oh, yeah, we got a bunch of people watching on Rumble. All right, let's see. Merry Christmas, Bitcoiners. Merry Christmas, Lance. Uh, Lance, almost every study done proves that we are already new to be true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just made it in. What did I miss? NW46783. Uh, a lot of Moscow time today. Make cryptocurrency great again, we hear from JN240750. Moran, mix at meetups, indeed. Zim KD, I'm late, you're doing fine. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, says Sluggo. You too, Sluggo. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We love it. Uh, Merry Christmas and ha ah, there we got someone. Moran, uh, wishing everyone backwards. Merry Christmas to Sluggo and the Freaks. Moran, self-hosted FOSS, free open source software. You know, this ETF thing's a fucking pain in the ass when it comes to the coordinated simultaneous attack on self-hosted wallets. Um, a very uh, a very annoying development, but we'll live. Uh, all I want for Christmas is peace for the world. Don't we all, Buzzin? Don't we all? We're going to get there. As I'm saying, look, the USD war machine almost over if we want it if enough americans wake up over christmas read the bitcoiner's guide to npc management if you want to help uh, that will help you get a couple of them anyway so um there you go uh nw4673 how do those of us that don't have lots of money invest in bitcoin the Fed and the digital currency is about to bankrupt us. Well, NW46783, uh, the answer is more or less simple. You might not like it, um, but let me tell you, it is literally just stay humble and stack sats. Uh, eventually, the, the point is to make saving money simple. That's what Bitcoin does. I'm not going to tell you there's a secret way. There isn't. There is no secret way, right? The secret way is do what you're doing instead of saving money uh, that's dollars that will never be useful again, uh, you save in Bitcoin and you go slowly, 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 slowly. And then you wait for the actual dollar to collapse and your purchasing power to go up. So that's one way to look at it right now. You can fuck around as we talked about yesterday with crypto. Crypto is gambling. It's 100% gambling. Now, I'm not opposed to gambling at all. Right. But remember, and, and I hope my testimony yesterday made sense to some people, uh, you know, I'll never judge people for doing it, but I always want to mention that it's dangerous. Right. Even someone like myself, who is as connected in crypto as you're going to find, uh, it's easy to get rugged. Right. No one's going to give you especially like a, a tip. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's a dog eat dog world out there. So uh, very, very difficult game full of information asymmetry filled with typical Wall Street bullshit. Um, unlike Bitcoin. So, um, you know, keeping it simple. Look, look I'll, I'll, I'll even be honest. I've had a ton of success in this industry, right? Um, but to this day, had I just been in 2014 and 2015, had I not tried to run 
uh, a Bitcoin consultancy and working for this thing and I got to travel, I got to go here. Oh, I got to buy a new thing, you know, oh, shoes to go on stage. Oh, I need a suit to go on fake news. Oh, the, the, uh, 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 had I just like ridden, like driven an Uber or worked at Starbucks and saved all the Bitcoin I had back then, I would have more Bitcoin than today. Believe like for real, <laughs> right? So even in my case, even in my case, um, keeping things simple now it was a different time right it was much easier to get bitcoin back then but i think the dynamics are still the same i don't think it's really changed it, you're dealing with less overall bitcoin but you're dealing with the same opportunity and so the more you complicate things the more you um, um try to do something sort of uh you know pull a fast one on bitcoin in the end you pay right in the end you pay so my advice is to always, if you don't want to get involved with that, keep it simple. Now, there's plenty of opportunities with these ordinals and all these other things, right? But again, it's the same game. Any day that thing can stop, and it has already once in the ordinal cycle. So there's the simple way of doing it, which I obviously always recommend, much safer, and it works. It really, really works. The other thing, you got to get lucky. You got it's gambling. You got to get lucky. So um, those are the options available to you. Uh, it, you know, everyone has learned the hard way. I, I don't expect you know the, the people who don't learn the hard way are the outliers. So um, you know, keep things simple. Don't don't try to reinvent saving money. Saving money is the easiest thing, and that's why we love Bitcoin. We want to make saving money easy again. If you make saving money easy again. You take away the leverage of the Wall Street financial engineers who are the ones supporting the USD war machine, right? So we want a world of no financial engineers eventually, and we'll get there. We're going to get there. So that's the advice. That's the advice. I hope it helps. I hope it helps. Uh, let me see if I got any more rumble comments. Um, uh, now we got, uh, where is the best place to buy Bitcoin? Well, there's a whole bunch. I, I, you know, honestly, I still use Cash App. Um, there's a few other places if you know how to get it. Uh, no KYC, but go and do one of these lessons if you do that, because I can't really explain that uh, so quickly here. There are ways to get no KYC uh, Bitcoin if you're into that. Uh, but honestly, the 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 spreads on Cash App are not bad, um, and you can remove what you buy from the wallet to your own uh hardware very easily so that's what that's what i like about it um it's the easiest to get out of um and it's a pretty good wallet so and it's it sort of plugs into everything easily um so there you go uh i use coinbase would you suggest a different wallet um yeah like i said i, I like cash app because it's bitcoin only you're not dealing with like there's, you know, you know, you hear about this, like you could blow up on, on a normal exchange. It's true because they have so much toxic garbage on their platform, like Ethereum and who knows what's going on with that. Like I, you know, Solana might kill it. It's all, it's consumer technology. So it's consumer trends. The, the main frame you need to understand Bitcoin versus crypto and ordinals and everything else, right? I, I love all that stuff, but this is the frame. Everything else is consumer technology. Right. Bitcoin is not consumer technology. There isn't an iPhone 12 coming for Bitcoin or 15 or whatever that there's no Bitcoin 2.0. That's not happening. There is no such thing. It's against the principles of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is valuable because of how long it survived. It's literally its age that makes it valuable. So why would you start over? It's something called the Lindy effect. Right. And the Lindy effect is the amount of time for which something has survived attack and, and challenge and hardship is the time uh, for which it can expect to live. So gold has a huge Lindy effect, right? It tried over time. If gold was like found today and we're like, wow, it's pretty invaluable. Like it, <laughs> there'd be no track record. So there'd be no argument about it. It'd be like tungsten or something stupid, right? You know, these tungsten balls, right? <laughs> they're not going to be like valuable, all right? They're valuable because they're collector's items and it's consumer technology. So that's fine. Um, but it's not the same as Bitcoin or gold or these things. So uh, everything else is consumer technology, right? So the problem with Coinbase and these other guys is that their liabilities are trendy and you can't really predict that, right? Well, you can do a little bit, but it's, it's, a, it's a problem. 
Uh, whereas Cash App, because they don't fuck with anything else, they don't really have that liability, right? They've got some fiat liability, but not that much because they are a bank, right? Cash App actually has a industrial bank license. And so they can access the fake Federal Reserve money. Uh, they have access to the discount window, it's called. And so I worked at Kraken. I was a strategist there and helped in the early days of our own banking relationship with the Federal Reserve. So I have some idea how this works. We were iced out of the uh, discount window, but Cash App isn't. So Cash App, one of only like four banks to start up since the crisis, one of them was the one we started at Kraken, right? So uh, there's not a lot of people with experience in new banks. Uh, I'm one of them. And Cash App is the most successful of these. So um, because they have discount window access and all that stuff. So there's not a lot of ways they can blow up. And they've been making a mint off of selling people Bitcoin for the past four or five years. So um, those things together mean that there isn't as much institutional risk with Cash App. So that's the way I see them different. Now, all of that said, you know, you're going to hear a lot of shit. People, a lot of people hate Coinbase in the Bitcoin world. I'm in a bit of a different position because I've met Brian a few times, uh, Armstrong. He's a really good guy, right? He is like, he's not rug pulling anybody. It might happen. People fuck up. He's not, you know, he's not perfect. He makes mistakes and all that, but he's not an enemy, right? He's, he's not your enemy. Um, now in the future, I don't, you know, he's not, I don't think he's going to go down in history as uh, a huge hero to Bitcoin like probably Jack will, right? So, um, um, you know, take that for what you want. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not worried about Coinbase either. Just to explain the difference, though, right? Uh, you know, I would, I do feel way more comfortable if you want to deal with one of these banking institution things. Cash App is on a, a bit more of a of a stable footing and de-risked for Bitcoiners alone, right? There, there is very little risk with Cash App. And their wallet means you can right out, right? If anything happened, they can't really seize your Bitcoin. Um, now they have records of it and all that, which is annoying, but that's fine. You know, there's no way around that anymore. All right, that's all I got for today. I got one more. I missed this one. Uh, oh, I got a few more here. Hold on. Trump and Vivek, Vivek 2024. Indeed. Yeah, I think so, Jose. I think it'll happen. Uh, remember what Trump said, right? I like, you know. Bird brain looked different when he was talking with the debate last time and and uh, DeSantis on his high heels. <laughs> and he said, I think Vivek won because he says good things about me. <laughs> too funny, too funny. Uh, did you see they're trying to stop hedge funds? Yeah, the homes as they, yes, tank the housing market. Yeah. No good, no good. All right, team. So I'll see you all on Boxing Day, which is in Canada the day after Christmas and in England as well. And uh, I, you, you don't have a name for it in, in America, but it's a great holiday and uh, I'll be around that morning.